Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Two weeks ago, I reviewed the Comgro Robo CNC engraver. The stock 60 watt spindle can cut through the acrylic plate and make a bracket like this, but obviously it was not powerful enough to make the same bracket with a 1 8 inch aluminum plate. As this machine is quite rigid compared to the CNC 3018, I decided to install a more powerful spindle on it and it should be able to make some aluminum parts. Besides the spindle upgrade, I will also do some other small upgrades to this machine. I designed a spindle mount to mount a 52mm diameter spindle. This can be used for a 500 watt or an 800 watt spindle, as they are both 52mm in diameter. If you are interested in seeing how I use Fusion 360 to make a mount like this, I link the video explaining that in the description. For the minor upgrades, I replaced the stock NEMA 17 40mm single shaft stepper motor with a dual shaft NEMA 17 48mm. It's actually from a Creality printer that is no longer in use. As the new spindle is much heavier, I would like to use a stepper motor with more torque. This machine came with two knobs on the X and the Y axis, but there is no knob on the Z axis. The dual shaft motor allows me to 3D print and install another knob on top of it. I also added a handle on the X and Y axis knob, so it will be easier for me to adjust the starting position manually. Since the 500 watt or 800 watt spindle requires a DC 100 or 110 volt power supply, you cannot just connect it to the power cable from the main board. In order to find a place to fix it on the machine, I made a plate that is similar to the one on the back of the offline controller, so I can hang the spindle PSU at the back. The spindle also came with a knob for you to adjust the speed but it didn't come with a power switch, so you have three options. The first one is to use a wire to connect it to keep it always on. The second is to connect it to a switch. It can be a button or a switch in my case. I don't have a switch right now, but I can connect it to an emergency stop button, which works the same. The last option is to connect a relay to the existing spindle power from the motherboard. Since power from the motherboard is 24 volts, you can use a 24 volt relay to work as an off and on switch. When the G-code is supposed to turn on the stock spindle, it will power up the relay so you can turn on the external power supply. I have another video to show how to do the exact same thing on the CNC3018, so please check out my CNC playlist if you are interested in seeing the details. The most challenging part of this upgrade is the 3D printed spindle mount. I have failed before using PLA to print the mount, as it will deform when the spindle gets hot. I recommend using ASA or ABS to print the mount. In this upgrade, I used ABS. You also need to get two longer bearings for the new mount. As the spindle is much larger and heavier, I made it 10mm taller than the stock one. You also need a lead screw nut for the spindle mount, as I have no way to remove the existing one. Since the lead screw is a 2 start lead screw, and most of the nuts used on 3D printers are 4 start, I am unable to find the same nut made from brass, so I got this one from Amazon, which was made by Palm. This is a type of plastic with high mechanical strength and rigidity, which may not be as durable as brass, but it's the only thing I could find with fast shipping. I also have to modify the dimensions of the mount in order to make it fit. I actually tried to print a few mounts to make it fit. The last challenging part is to push the bearing in the spindle. I wasn't able to push it down by hand or with a hammer, so I used a drill press vise to push it in and it looks fine. Since the mount can fit both a 500 watt and an 800 watt spindle, I will use a 500 watt spindle to try to make an aluminum part and see how it works. I will make a bracket similar to the one the stock spindle was not able to cut. The length of the long side is 60 millimeters and the short side is 20 millimeters, so it can fit the 2020 aluminum extrusion. I will use the 1 8 inch single flute end mill. This HQ master is recommended by my friend Mickey from Australia. It's super affordable and I bought 10 from Amazon for $17, which is less than $2 each. At first, I tried aggressively to find out how far I could push this machine. I started at an 800 feed rate and a 0.4 depth of cut and snapped a few of them. Once I slowed down to 200 feed rate and a 0.2 depth of cut, it worked pretty well. I will run three operations on this mount. First, I will remove the label by using a facing operation and hopefully get a nice and clean surface. 
the spindle can face the plate without too much vibration. This machine is quite sturdy and this facing operation was completed in around 3 minutes. Next, I will use a bore operation to make the holes on the plate. I will just use a 0.1mm pitch as I want to make the hole clean. If you watched my previous video, the stock spindle was not able to cut through the aluminum plate, but this 500 watt spindle can slowly go deep down to the bottom without problems. It's a little loud without an enclosure, but the noise level is still acceptable. It took 8 minutes to drill all 5 holes. Let's clean it up a little bit and we will move on to the next operation. I will run a contour to cut the hole bracket out. I will use a 200 feed rate and a 0.2 depth on each pass. It does vibrate a little bit, but compared to the CNC 3018, the vibration is a great improvement. It would run about 16 passes to cut this plate through the plate. This is the last pass, and as you can see, the end mill is cutting blue tape. I can now manually stop the program as I don't need it to run another pass. The whole contour operation took 28 minutes. It actually took about 40 minutes to make this bracket. Let's clean it up and take a look at the result. This part looks really nice. The surfaces and edges are much cleaner than the parts made from the CNC 3018. The x-axis of the machine is more sturdy thanks to this 12mm linear rod and compared to the 10mm rod on the CNC 3018. The shorter length of the x-axis also makes this machine a CNC 1830, so it can hold the weight of the spindle much better. Let's measure the accuracy of the part. For the long side, it's supposed to be 60mm and the part came up with 60.15mm. For the short side, it's supposed to be 20 millimeters for the 20 by 20 extrusions. It finally came up with 20.07 millimeters, which is pretty accurate for a machine in this price range. Next, we will move on to test the 800 watt spindle. I ordered the spindle from AliExpress. It actually arrived two weeks ago, but I didn't check it until I needed to use it. The spindle has an 8 mm shaft, but the seller sent a 6.35 mm shank with it, so we have to order another shank from Amazon. Before I start to make the parts, let's compare the sound of the 500 watt spindle to the 800 watt one. The 800 watt spindle is much louder than the 500 watt spindle, while the 800 watt claim the maximum RPM is 20,000 and the 500 watt is just 12,000. Okay, let's make the same parts to compare. Start with the facing operation. It looks fine, but the spindle is really super loud, and we had to wear headphones or put our fingers in our ears. After the first layer is faced, the surface is still not even, so we let it run another pass. It finished the first operation without problems, but when we started the bore operation to drill some holes, the spindle overheated and we smelled something weird, so we stopped the machine. I think this cheap 800 watt spindle from AliExpress is not safe to use unless you slow it down to around 70 to 80% to make it work like a 500 watt spindle. Most 800 watt spindles I saw in the market are water cooled and powered by VFD, like the one I am using on my larger 6090 steel structure CNC. This 2.2 kilowatt spindle is water cooled. It's both quiet and powerful. So, I don't recommend anyone to try this kind of 800 watt air cooled spindle. For a small desktop machine like this, I would stick with the 500 watt spindle. After this spindle upgrade and other minor upgrades, this Congo Robo CNC is even nicer. The price of this machine is $214, the 500 watt spindle costs $80, and the dual shaft stepper motor, lead screw nut, the bearings, and the 24 volt relay cost around $40. 
the total cost of this setup, which allows you to make some nice aluminum parts, is around $334. If you are interested in seeing more desktop CNC upgrade videos, you can also check out my CNC playlist, which covers the installation of the spindle, emergency button, and how to use a relay as an on and off switch to control the spindle. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week!